Hey guys, this week we are going to be talking about Jesus and why he is worthy of it all. We talk about the church, family, theology, and even entertainment. In fact, if it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. All right, this is the Mike Charleston Show, and I am Mike Charleston, and today I am joined with Chuck Tate over there. Hello, everybody. And then we have Larry Grimm. Hey. And we have my beautiful wife over here. Hello, everybody. Which we'll be talking about at halftime. She came out with a book. But anyways, uh, we we are back. We missed last week. We told you guys we were going to miss last week. But um, but we came back from the camp. And yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, this was our sixth shindig, and we're going to just jump right into it, guys. The um, We decided to have a theme this year, and not every year we have a theme, but this year we have a theme, had a theme, and it was called Worthy of It All. And we wanted to impress on people that Jesus is worthy of everything, and it's kind of appropriate because of, of everything that we do right. here. You yeah, know, right. our podcast, the, the YouTube channel, the website, the, the church, everything that we do, He is worthy of it all. And uh, the camp. We wanted to give honor and glory to him. And so originally we were going to do glory and just uh, the, uh, glory the glory to God. Of, the glory of God. The glory of God. Yeah. And as we got into it and just some of the songs that we decided to do and some of the message it was going to gear to glory and, and be, him being worthy are about the same. They are. Right. 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 So, I mean, we're not, we're not missing it too much. But we decided to change it to, to worthy. He is worthy of it all. So, so our music was focused on that. And we mm-hmm. actually had a theme song this year. We yeah, did have did a theme it? song. I liked that. Yeah, it was called <laughs> "Worthy of It All." Yeah. So, if That's you're familiar with it, yeah, it was, it was good. And maybe some people got tired of it, but you know what? They got it in their heads. They definitely got it in right. their heads. You know, the, whenever we have the camp, there's we always have you know a lot of activities, a lot of things for people to do, and we want them to enjoy their time there. We want them to be able to to relax somewhat yep. and be around, and be able to visit with other people and get some encouragement. But uh, you know, as we were talking about it and and, and planning ahead for the camp, the, the one thing that became apparent to us was the fact that we wanted to be able to focus on uh, on. God yes, and right. and on the messages that were going to be there on right. the time of worship and we wanted that to be the central piece of the camp, not the other things that were going on. Right. I want people to be able to really be able to see Christ. Yes, all yeah. those other things are good. Yeah, they're fine, but like we were saying, when they go home, what are they going to be reminded of when they think of the 2022 Mississippi Shindig? And hopefully, they they'll come away with. I had an encounter with Jesus. That that was the whole idea, at right. least. And so maybe other people came for other reasons. I don't know. Well, if you were 10 and under, it was God got ball. That's right. right. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Uh, and if you were over that, there was a lot of it. A lot of volleyball, a lot right. of gaga mm-hmm. ball, a lot of, a lot of running. It was a beautiful oh. weekend. Oh, it was awesome. It was the weather was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and the weather was cool, too. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it was beautiful. It, you know, it just you couldn't ask for a better weekend. The other thing is, it's it's sort of like a family reunion that you actually want to go to. That you want <laughs> to go to. <laughs> That's right. That's, that is funny. <laughs> so anyway, so the speaking also focused on that too, right? The the messages, right? right. And yeah. the we kind of gave the speakers. We had a number of different speakers this year. We had uh, Ben Sargent, and they have a ministry called Onward for Christ. And uh, some of his younger men were able to speak at least once, Cade and Elliot. So we're going to actually kind of go through and just talk about, you know, Jesus being worthy. Kind of, I know a lot of the listeners couldn't make the, the shindig and or didn't have any interest in it. Right. But they should. Well, well you're right. But next year. There's, there's only so much room. Right. And maybe you're, you're not into a family camp. Maybe you're, you know... Uh, an older family or whatever, and you're just like, this is more of a family camp, and that, that is true. But so we're going to kind of go over and just talk about because it's such an important topic that that he is actually worthy of everything, right. and I can try to fix my messages here. You, you know? can try to. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't think they need to be fixed. No, no, no. no maybe great. I can explain. Uh, but anyway, so why don't we go ahead and just start out Revelations four eleven, babe? Revelation. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. 
Yeah, so I, I surprised everybody with a little video. I, did you guys like that video? Oh, yes. yes. That was yeah, good. It, I, I had a lot of people come up to me like, I, I need that video. Uh, maybe we can post that somewhere. I don't know. We stole it from someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we fixed it up a little bit because the original, the music was just way too annoying. Uh, got too loud, and so I had Rebecca go in, and she had to rework it. So she used the video and found all the clips and put it all together, and then redid the music. Nice. And so it was a little bit of work. So we we did it, but we stole it. And, and so I don't want to put it out there, but I want people to see it. it. It's and there's so many different versions. It's called "That's My King," and there's so many different versions. And we did the extended version. So maybe we can put a link. To the the one that with the louder music, we want to give credit where credit is due. Right. We're not we're not we don't want to steal it. But it was it's a powerful video, and it basically was kind of what our theme was that that's my king that he is worthy, that he's yeah. glorious, and just having all the attributes of God just kind of just shot out like that was just really kind of oh cool. yes. Well, it makes me think. I think it's in was it Revelation chapter five I, I or maybe know. six? Not the verse we read, but where. John's in heaven, and the um, scrolls are getting ready to be open. Yeah, that's and the fun. angel said, "You know who's worthy to yep. open it?" Mm-hmm. Right. And there was no man in heaven or earth. And John said he wept. Yeah. Right. And then, no, that was one of the songs we sang. Yeah. And uh, which is, fits the theme. So what do we have? Second Samuel twenty-two and four. And if you notice, my voice is a little bit shot, but that's what happens when you go to camp. Yeah. It says, "I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies." And also you have their Psalm 18. It's also in Psalm 18. I looked and I was like, wow. And it's like several verses there are just the same. I'm like. Yeah, he is worthy. Sometimes we get caught up in this life. And that's what camp is so nice about camp is that it's a getaway. Right. And and especially there. It's hard to get cell service. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And it's just a beautiful weekend. You can throw your phone on the bed and just ignore it for the whole weekend and just spend you know, contemplate, think about God, spend some time with your, your wife, your, your husband, your kids, and uh, think about God. And He is worthy of everything that we do, and we get so sidetracked sometimes, so yeah. it's really good just to get alone with God sometimes. Well, yeah, and it's a beautiful setting as well, so oh, goodness, you're out yes. in the middle of nature, you got the big lake, and you just sit there and you... You're like, wow, this is, is this going to be like heaven? No, I know, or, right? Yeah, for, for Mississippi, it's definitely one of the prettier places. <laughs> yeah. right. If that's for, if people's first experience of Mississippi, they may want to move there. Right. Like, don't, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> it, it's a lot of trees and it's not so hilly. But, but anyway, it, it was a beautiful camp. It still is a beautiful camp. Yeah. But it's, um, so anyway, why don't we just, you know, Ben's first message, um, Ben Sargent, he will p- post these. Joshua's working on all the messages right now. I don't know if they're all finished or some of them are finished. Oh, they're, they're all finished? No, they're yeah. not all finished. Okay. But we're working on them. We'll put them on the website, Fellowship of Believers. Actually, we'll put them on Mississippi. We'll probably put them on both, MississippiShindig.org and Fellowship of Believers. Dot org. Uh, we'll put the messages on there for people to listen to. But his first message, uh, Ben's first message, he's starting out the camp by, uh, what What do you guys think? What, he didn't really have a title. Well, I'm not going to comment on this one. <laughs> because according to Ben, I was sleeping. That's right. Which I was, well, not completely. Uh, yeah, he, he called you out. He didn't, know, he didn't call you out. He told he you. Was he, he called you out later. I was contemplating. I was in deep <laughs> contemplation. I heard you were praying, but with your mouth open uh, well, like that. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was making noises, so I don't, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, was it? No, 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 no. But it was... Um, no, anyway, he was I talking about stuff. it. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, he was talking about the feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000 and the yeah. stories about you know Christ yeah. uh, taking the little that we had... And multiplying it. And you would think that the disciples would have learned from the first one, on the second one, but they didn't. Um, so any comments on, on that one that you guys had? So I thought that, you know, the thing that he brought out, the fact that when Jesus saw that they didn't have anything to eat, they right. had all these people there, the, the thing he brought out was that Jesus had compassion on them. Yeah, and that's a good point because right. I remember him talking about that. And his point was... A couple of years earlier, I don't know how early, he was saying how he would be like, oh, these hangers on, all they want to do is follow Jesus for uh, anything that he can do. And I, I kind of bought into that too. And I'm like, yeah, they were. They were just following for the miracles. But he was. his point was, you know what? That would have been me too because you know right. what? I have a friend. I have a buddy. I have this coworker. I have this person that needs a, a miracle. 
I'm going right. to do whatever I can to get this guy healed and get him a miracle. And that kind of should be our hunger. I'm going to follow Jesus no matter what, even if it means I go hungry. And they didn't know that he was going to feed them. No, right. but they weren't uh, asking. No, and no. Jesus nope. took the initiative. and He did. And so. uh, that was a good point, though, the compassion that Jesus had on them. So yeah. I liked that he talked about compassion because when he saw them, instead of seeing <clears throat> their problems and you know, all the difficulties that people can bring. He had compassion. I don't know. I feel like compassion is a huge thing. And like lately, I felt like God has given me more compassion for people in my life. Mm. But um, I think about Jesus having compassion because when I look at people, I know a little bit about their life and my heart goes out to them. But when Jesus looked at them, yeah. he knew everything. Right. So I'm like, that had to be such a burden to bear that, you know, looking at them and knowing their whole situation, everything that goes into that, it's really a lot. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, if even if they were there just for the miracles or the food, can't blame them. You can't blame them. No, right. and they're there. They're meeting Jesus right. while they're there, and so I'd be there. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean why not? Why, yeah, exactly. It's so yeah. How, so how does that connect to He is worthy? Is everybody looking at me? Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it, it Mike turned his head that way. <laughs> <laughs> we were just following. <laughs> no, I think uh, I would say because one, he 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 had a plan. Two, he took he had compassion on the crowd. Right. He didn't have to. He could have said, you know, you guys been out here. It's time to go home. Right. He, but, but, and he took the little that he had, whether right. it was the guy, the little boy with the. Uh, five loaves and two fishes or the kid with seven loaves I forget mm-hmm. okay right and the little bit and fed the many and right. and I mean just that I mean you hear you see the miracles and and it reminded me actually it just was kind of dawning on me when I was listening to him preach that they were out in the wilderness nowhere around where you could just go to McDonald's right you know on the way home <laughs> yeah. and where where were the Israelites in the wilderness when they were wandering around in the wilderness, right? Yeah. And what Egypt. were they being fed? They were being fed the manna. Yeah. And here is the bread of life, feeding them bread. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was pretty... So I don't know where you could go with that, but I thought, well, wow. But yeah, he is worthy of even the little bit that we have. Right. Because right. he'll take whatever. Right. You know, he, yeah. he's wanting you to bring everything. Right. But oftentimes we feel like we got nothing to bring. Yep. It's like, oh, this isn't good enough. Right. It's only not, it's only five fishes and yeah, yeah, two well, loaves, even that, yeah. five loaves and two fishes, whatever. What is that going to do for exactly. this crowd? But, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. yeah he'll get well, the glory. I always wonder, what did that look like? Like, were they like breaking up the bread and it just kept, it just didn't get smaller? Right. Or I, I don't know. Did they put it in a basket and all of a sudden they looked? Well, the it's one cool. they ended up with twelve basket right. schools, and yeah. you're like, how? Yeah, yeah you exactly. Know? Did they pick it up off the ground, or <laughs> right. yeah. it, it's kind of amazing? But it's, no, that was so. That was Ben's first session to kick us off, and um, it was good. It was it was fine, and um, so that night, which we, we had an earlier curfew this time, and I already am tired, and that's not a good sign. Yeah, yeah, uh, you were. I was, I'm, I'm exhausted, and I'm like, okay, this is not good. But Friday morning, uh, we wake up, and Cade, now Cade's a young man, and he's got some zeal, and uh, we gave him an opportunity to share. And his message, she was almost stealing from my message, and I, I was I was looking at him with daggers. But you can't say stealing because he didn't know what your message he didn't was. Know. But I knew what you were going to share. Yeah, and I, I kept know. thinking, but oh, he, no. he went a different direction, and it was fine. Because once again, this is the theme, so it doesn't matter, right? right. You know, right. if we all say the same thing. So Cade's session, he was talking about what is the point of this life, right? Yeah. That the whole point of right. this, you know creation is that it's a testing ground to, to prove our faith, which was very much like what I was saying <laughs> in my message, and that God is looking for people that will have faith in Him. Is is God tr- uh, true, or is the enemy true? Right. And and obviously, we believe that God is true, and, and so that uh, this whole, everything that is in this world is to come against that. And yeah. are we to believe him or are we to believe Satan? So, um, well, because yeah, anyway. we do look at Eve in the garden and we think, 
why would she have believed the devil? But we each have the same question in front of us, like, who are we going to believe? It's still the same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's right. You know, I thought it was the, one of the things that just kind of jumped out at me, and we have here in the notes that he, he started with Adam, and he wanted to build character in him. Right. And one of the one of the quotes that stuck in my head from Kate, so Kate, I actually remembered this part. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't sleeping. Is that... <laughs> yeah. Is that um, God, could, God couldn't create character. No, he can't. Right. Right. Yeah. It's something that has to be built. We have to experience. It has yep. to go through, and that has to be something. So that that's part of what God's design is for him, for us to be able to have that relationship for him. He wanted somebody who wanted him. He wanted somebody who wanted to obey him. Yep. And um, I thought that was really a really good statement. God can't create character. No, you, you right. can't. The, the only way to get experience is experience. It's, yeah. And the only way to get character is to actually go through something. Now, obviously, we all have failed. We come short of the glory of God. But he wants to restore that, and and it's all in Christ. But um, well, so yeah, that's that was. Go ahead. I was gonna say the other thing I took from this was it is interesting how God started in the garden, and what He really wanted from the beginning was kids that would our children, people, <laughs> kids, <laughs> kids <right. laughs> that would follow Him because they chose to follow Him. Right. They they took. The path of obedience before the path of experience, right? They, or they, the path of knowledge, because that's what was offered. You'll be as gods, knowing both good and evil. But what God wanted was not necessarily that He wanted to hide that from them, but that He wanted them to learn obedience first, right? Trust and let Him trust and obey. Trust and obey. Yeah. And then the it's the interesting thing is that's what He's going to end up with, right? In the end, is. Children that followed him through obedience. Yes. I, I mentioned to you on the way home about the book of Job and how that's a picture, in my mind, that even though Job wasn't perfect, but in spite of all his circumstances and his trials, he chose to follow God. Right, right. And and in the end, you read the book of Revelation, and that's where we end up. Yeah, so mm -hmm. his, his, his main point there was, are we going to believe what... What God says, or are we going to believe and fall prey to what the, the lies of Satan? Right. You know, and then you go, obviously God wants us to believe in Him to give Him the glory because He is worthy of it because He created us, He created everything that we are, and for um, I want to say Seth, but Cain and Abel, and Abel, you know, looked around, observed, saw, and by faith was motivated to present a more excellent sacrifice. And 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 so that is our our desire, you know, that we we can observe, we look, we we God has reached out to us and we respond. You know, he sends the provision, we respond. And it's it's and because of that, it's nothing that we have done. He is worthy of our life. Right? You know, that's yeah. that's kind of the the point. So then we have so then then that evening so Friday night, I'm getting ready to speak, and then Chuck goes off. So, yeah, <laughs> Chuck, Chuck. So, yeah. What do you mean Chuck goes off? Yeah, so, I, I, I think like you our, know exactly yeah, what yeah. he means. So Chuck was a little bit fired up, man. Yeah, and, not uh, a little. Yeah, he was just, it, it, honestly, I was, and this is being the truth, that he probably yeah. went off for about 10 minutes, and uh, I was looking at the clock. And not because it was bad, <laughs> but I was like, dude, if you go another five, ten minutes, I'm free. <laughs> you know, I'll save my other, my, I'll save my message for some other time. Uh, but it was only ten minutes, and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm still in. But, um, but, but no, what, a, what a ten minute. Yeah, was it was. Uh, he was fired up. He was preaching. He was like a Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, Chuck, my, wa my wife was like, "Who was that guy?" Oh, man. <laughs> so what? Uh, I meant to ask you what spurred that or so, inspired it. it was, you know, my my heart going to camp this year was the burden for relationships among families. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I. I um, as as Ben says, that um, it's easier to go to China to try to reach somebody in China and say that you love the people in China until you get there and stay there for a while. Right. Maybe you may not yeah. be so lovely. Right. Right. Um, we have this we have this thing that the people that are closest to us are the ones that's hardest to love. Right. Yeah. And it should be the opposite. 
Yes, yes, it should be the opposite. So we focus at home, we focus from the inward out, and work on the relationships that we have at home, and that's from there we're able to go out to other people. Right. But we have a struggle. I mean, within the groups that, the, that we run with, we have a struggle within these families of um, we want. I mean, we've separated ourselves from the world through homeschooling. We've done things to pull our kids out of the world, but we get to a point where still problems. There's still issues. Yep. There's still problems, and we have difficulty addressing those. And the relationship between the husband and the wife. Wife gets in, and you know that's the the core of the home. But you right. have problems there. You have the the husband who's not doing what he's supposed to do to be able to lead or take com, take control, of, or not control, responsibility for what mm-hmm. God has given to him. And the mm-hmm. wife doesn't isn't willing to actually play her part and do her role. And the children are the same way. The children then get. They get um, what was the how did the Bible put it? They get discouraged. Mm, yes, yep. you know, and they so then they're at a point where I, you know I'm, I'm looking for that day I can get out of here. Right. So my heart went in from that. That's where I went from was the the idea that you know why why are we like this? Why do we want to? Why are we doing this? And why why is things why is Satan being able to win? I'm tired yep. of seeing Satan win. Yep. I agree. And um, the thing that came back kept coming back to me is just, we're just not willing to do what the Bible says. Yeah, that's right. at the heart of it, right? That is, yeah. and that's kind of how he's, he's he got. So to, to to paint a picture, like you're like, well, how? What do you mean Chuck goes off? Is <laughs> he just stood up and started going off? So he's up there for the singing. Yes, he, yeah. We, he's the kind of the lead singer up there, and we're all up there. The band's up there. Uh, I'm up there playing guitar. Sarah's singing too, and. And um, so he has the microphone in his hand. Yeah, so, be careful you put a mic in my hand. <laughs> so it wasn't like he just went up there and got got crazy, but he was just leading us in prayer. And then as he just he just went off and just said, "Do you believe this book is true?" And he held, held up the Bible, and, and he didn't say, "Is it true?" He mm-hmm. was like, "Do you believe it's true? Do you believe it's true?" And um, because if it, if it is, then. What are we doing? Yeah, right. I mean, to steal your word at the end, uh, end of the, your phrase at the end of the day, That's right. yeah. you can't make someone believe what they don't want to believe. Right. Yep. Yep. And you know, like Elijah says, why halt you between two opinions? If God is Lord, serve Him. If Baal, yep. serve Him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's either true or it's not. It, yeah. Yep. There's no middle yeah. ground. Right. I mean, it's, and it's true. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it's really I, absolutely right. whether we you agree. believe it's true. We're all on the same page on that one. <laughs> well, yes. that, but that actually is part of the problem is because churches nowadays they don't teach that. They no. say it is God's but, word, but they don't actually believe it to yeah, be. Yeah, you can't so. treat it like the you can't treat it like the um, uh, the Sunday buffet. Right. Pick right. what you want and leave the rest. Right. Right. It's it's either all or nothing. Right. right. You know. Are you going to believe to do it? This? If you are, then do it. Well, and, you know. that's the other thing is we're not called to – the the life of a Christian or a believer is not one to look to the Bible to make them happy. It's are you going to believe God and you're going to – are you going to be obedient to what he called you to do? Yeah. Because he's worthy. Because, because he's exactly, worthy. Exactly. Because right. he's worthy. It has worthy. nothing to do with us. Mm-hmm. It right. has nothing to do with our happiness, even though I, I would think that you would be happy serving him, but it's because he is right. worthy of it. I mean, right. even when it talks about those relationships, when Paul talks about the relationships in Ephesians and Colossians, he says, do it as unto the Lord. Yeah. Right. You know, don't 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 do it because the husband's worthy of it. Because he's, yeah. probably, he's probably not. not. No, yeah, exactly. We know he's not. But God right. is. You know, don't right. do it. Because God asks you to do something. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It right. doesn't matter yeah. if the other person is deserving. It's so I had to follow that up. And <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about we did, that. No, no, we had some, we had a song service, and actually the song service was pretty good too. Oh yeah, was, and. Um, and then I had to get up and, and share, and I actually shared this in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So people listening, if you heard it in Ohio, you're like, "Oh, good, I didn't miss much." <laughs> and um, it, it was called the Greater Commission, and we talked about the Great Commission and how I'm all for the Great Commission. And maybe we'll have a separate podcast on this. I know, uh, I forget the listener up there in Ohio. You remember Elmer? Yeah, I think it was Elmer. Uh, so maybe you should do a podcast on just what you taught. And I'm like, I- I'd love to, but I want to wait until after the shindig. Yes. So it's after the shindig <laughs> now. Um, but we get so busy, go, go, go. And, and actually, you quoted me. You didn't quote Ben. But I'm the one who oh, said that. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. That, that's what we, we say, that we love. I, can, I love the person in China. And it's like, you know why? Because you don't know You them. don't know them. That's right. And nothing against the people in China. They're probably great people. <laughs> but it's hardest to love the people with that we're closest to. And and that's the challenge that I wanted to share was the Great Commission is great, but it's not really spoken of a, a lot in the, in the New Testament. Right. Yeah. 
And I wondered why, you know, why? And as I was studying through a lot of the different things, I noticed a theme throughout the New Testament, which was love one another. And what does that look like? You know, obviously it's easy to say love one another. And I know a lot of people say, well, I love him, but I left him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I divorced him, but I still love him. I'm yeah. like, well, your actions aren't really... They don't line it, up. <laughs> right. It, it's kind of interesting. But we get so caught up, go, 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 love the people out there, and then despise and hate the people, kind of like what you were saying, Chuck. The, your love is going to show itself the most in the closest relationships. If you hate the people that are closest, you probably are a person that is not of love. Yeah. And and so your wife and your kids and your neighbors and all, they know you the best. That's who you really are but, at the heart of it. That's really who oh, you yeah. are. Yeah. Isn't it, uh, was it in First John talking about that? It yes. says, how can you love God yep. whom you haven't seen, yep. but you don't love your brother whom you have seen? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's kind of the theme that we were going with uh, in those verses. <laughs> And uh, love, love, love. And, and so why love? Because he's worthy of it. Not because Chuck's, you know, lovely or right. Larry's lovely, even though they're very lovely people. Um, or my, <laughs> well, even my you. wife. You know, my <laughs> wife is very lovely, but I don't even love her because she's deserving of it or loving right. or lovely. It's because that's what God wants me to do. And I forget my own quote. I had a quote up there, but it's uh, something about love is not a feeling to be attained or something. It's a it's a command to be obeyed. Right. And we obey to love. And uh, this is something that the church has failed, that there's over 20-some verses in the New Testament about loving one another and what that looks like. And this is actually the thing that will define us. Yeah. And that you yeah. love one another. And we have such a problem with that. And we would rather love the, the person in Africa or China and not our, we would not take the time and effort in our own um, households. And we don't have enough time to go into it because obviously it was a message I preached, so it's fresh <laughs> and I, I want to keep going on, but we won't. In fact, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to take a little halftime break. No game time with Abigail this week. So, Aww. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Chuck won't lose. And um, but no, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm we're gonna talk about Sarah's new book. Yeah, that she, yeah, she I came think out. Pam read it already. She's already gone through. Yeah, it. Oh, sweet, sweet. So we'll we'll talk about that, and when we come back, we'll finish the recap of the the camp and why Jesus is worthy of it all. Thank you for listening. This is the Mike Charleston Show. <laughs> so we are on, and uh, this is the halftime, no game time with Abigail. And uh, by the way, uh, just to give Joshua a shout out, and uh, uh, the um, poor Joshua put a lot of work and effort into everything this weekend with the shindig. He, he was playing the synth and all that. He, it's a lot of work. And Chuck is like doing everybody's name. And he's like, over here is Abigail doing the cello. Woo! Everyone's cheering. Yeah, Abigail. Yeah. Did I miss Joshua? No, Joshua oh. was next, and no one cheered. And then we moved on, and then everybody started cheering. <laughs> I and, cheered at my heart. Yes. <laughs> and, and then when we showed the the commercial the, for the Mike Charleston show, uh, hardly gave any credit to Joshua. I thought I said something, but someone was like, "You didn't uh, say Joshua's name." So poor Joshua. Everyone, give it up for Joshua. Yay! Yeah. Hey, yeah. the goal of the guy doing the sound and the producing is that nobody notices that you mess up. Well, I was going to so say I, that's the downside. Man. Yeah. <laughs> that's the downside of being the behind the scenes guy. Yeah, no one, no one knows. But yeah. anyway, you did great when nobody says anything. Right. No, he, he's, he's done a lot for the shindig and for the show. So, props to to Joshua. Okay, so. Sarah has been working on a book for a long time here. We tried to get it out for the shindig, obviously. We did a young married uh, session and uh, really didn't have anything to do with the book. But no. Uh, no, but but it was fun. We did that. So anyway, why don't you hold that up to the camera right over here? Okay. Yeah, okay, you could look at the camera. There it is. Oh yeah, what is it called? It's called You Can Run in Flip-Flops, but is that the best way? Is that the best way? I would say no, mm. because if you're on a beach, you can run barefoot. And if you're on the street, the flip-flops are holding you back a little bit. Yeah, I wear yeah. flip-flops all the time, but you not do. when I run. No, you don't. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 
What is the premise of the book? Well, the premise is basically it's the collection of um, advice and things I've learned through the um, 23 years of marriage. And in the last, I guess it's been five or six years that just occasionally things will come to my mind. And so I've written notes on my phone sure. and then I just started collecting them and writing writing down more to each of those notes. Stealing and, my ideas. <laughs> and I wasn't <laughs> stealing, sharing. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I, I thought I'd put it all together and hope that it could help some yeah, nice, ladies out nice. there. So why did you write the book? Well, because I've, I hopefully have learned something and I feel like, you know, it's good just to get another perspective out there. I know sometimes you say that, you know, there's plenty of books on marriage, plenty of books on being a wife and a mother and whatever. And I would agree there's a lot, but maybe something I say in some way could help somebody out there. So I thought, well, I'll put down what I know. I I thought you were going to say because you have five daughters and... Well, that too. (laughs) And you wanted to write this to them and and a daughter-in-law now. And a daughter-in-law. Well, it is basically everything I would want to, to this point, pass on to them. So I thought, well, I'll put it all in a book and and they can have it. See what what people think. So, all right, this is some... What about this? Why did you title it, You Can Run in Flip Flops, but is that the best way? It's a long title. It is a long title. And I know we tried to shorten it, but I I just didn't know of a better way. And I actually, in the book, I had a chapter... That, that was called that, and I rewrote it and rewrote it, and I just never was happy. And finally, one day, I was like, hey, I can just make that the title and just kind of tie everything together sure. with that. But basically, I mean... Well, ain't she the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, I mean, it's true. You can run in flip-flops, yeah. and there's a lot of things in life that we can do, mm. and it's not that it's necessarily wrong or sinful to do them, but God does have a the best way for us to to live for him, the yep. best way to be a wife, the best way to be a sure. mom. And so I think that... So you have all the answers in that book. Uh, I don't know about no, that. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but you do have a better way. Yeah. Yep. And why don't you look into the camera and say who this is written to? Okay. I don't know which camera I'm supposed to right look at. Right over there, this one. Uh, okay. Go on with the red light on. <laughs> um, well, I mean, originally... No I, red light. Okay. I wrote it for my daughters and my daughter-in-law so far. And, uh, but also just to any ladies, young, old, um, really, I think any young teens to old married women could all read it and benefit from something in there, I would hope. Well, like we, we did a young married session at the, the camp and the, the one emphasis, we did five years and younger. If you've been married five years or younger, which there was nine couples there, which this is a young person's camp and there was a lot of young, young married couples. Yeah. And one of the, the people there <clears throat> asked a, a very good question, and his question was, have you hit a brick wall? And if you have, how did you get out of it? How, how did you come back from that? Mm-hmm. And, and we were just very honest, and we were saying, well, this is why we're having a young married session, because we haven't hit a brick wall. We've actually had a very good marriage, not to say that we haven't had our issues and we haven't had disagreements, and we talked about some of those in in the session there, but it was we've actually had a very blessed marriage, and we don't know what it's like to come back from that pit mm. of despair and then to come back out and have that miracle. So it's really hard for us to relate sometimes. So that's why we wanted to focus on the newlyweds and like, hey man, you guys can start out really good and here's some of the things that we did and we learned and maybe you guys can implement some of these things and, and go from there. And that's kind of what you're trying to say with your book is, uh, say, hey, if you're a, a, a newlywed or a new mother, new new wife or whatever, uh, pick up the book. Uh, maybe yep. this will be a blessing to you. Yep. Yep. Uh, you guys have any questions? No. Are there any pictures in it? No pictures. Sorry, uh, Larry. I, sorry. I won't be yeah. reading it. Yeah. So. No pictures, but it does have a really cool design yes. on the front. Yeah, that yeah. Is. look at that. That, that is, is a, you know who did that? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you tell him, babe? Oh. That was you. Yeah. Did a I, great I worked, job. Yeah, I worked on job. that. Everyone was waiting. That was the last thing. And I'm like, pressure, pressure. <laughs> and I came up with one and I'm like, I just, Sarah liked it. And I'm like, ah, she's not an artist. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I thought about it at work all, all day. And so I had an idea and I came home and in five minutes, boom, just like the Beatles, just on the napkin, boom, just put it out there. I don't know if it's exactly five minutes, but. Well, no, well the thought true. was five minutes. Yes. Right. Okay. So five I minutes. do have a question. So who do you, or maybe who, or what inspired you to write that? Mm-hmm. Or did somebody inspire you? Well, I guess 
I don't know. I feel like even with um, a family that we've had in church over the years, um, one of the ladies would always ask me week after week questions and try to pick my brain and pull out of me everything that I thought about different um, situations. And oh, come on, I want to know what you think. Pretty much. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and her thing to me was always that there's such a lack of godly examples. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, she felt like she could have been in a much different place if she had had godly examples to look to years ago. Mm. And so, so I felt like there was just, there, there is a lack and people don't know how to live and how to, what God would want them to do. And so I feel like, you know, we need that not, not to say everybody look at me and I have all the right. answers, yeah. but I do feel like you it feel is. Like- I got something to say. Well, I do have something to yeah. say. So, <laughs> so you so put I it in the book. Yeah. yeah. Is this a kissing book? Not a kissing and book, no, is it? Not no, a it's not a kissing book. book. Anyway, okay, well, that's that's the book. You can yeah. run in flip-flops, but there is a better way. You can go, actually, you can go to Amazon. we put the, the, the link in the description here below. Um, we, we'll put it on the website at some point. But, yeah, go check it out. Hopefully, it'll be a blessing. Was it, was. it a difficult task? To me, writing a book seems like an impossible um, thing to do. It just do. took a really long time yeah. because I don't really have set time that I can write. Yeah. And so it was, you know, a lot of times in the morning before everybody gets up, that's when everything's quiet and I can write. And then for a long time, that's when Jeremiah would want to talk to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's gone. <laughs> but now he's gone. So then I was able to finish it up for the shindig. <laughs> that's so. right. All right. Well, that should be it for that. So thank you very much. And I, 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 I started reading it, and I was like, oh, man, she's throwing me under the bus uh, here. A couple now now I have to read it. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, did not. I don't know where you got that from. I mean, I've heard about half of it because Jeannie yeah. was reading it out loud. <laughs> so I haven't got to throw it under the no, bus No, it's, it's all good. It's it's all good. So I pick like it up. the sound you gave me last time. What's that? It's not, it's not like the sounds you gave me last time. Oh, my goodness. Uh, which sounds did I give you? Whatever the the fail the answer is. <laughs> 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 Wrong. Wrong. Yeah, that was all it. Those. <laughs> That's the Chuck sound. The Chuck sound. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Okay, well, we will be right back, and we'll come back with the rest of the show. Thank you for listening to the Mike Charleston Show. We are back. So let us finish off the, the camp. So Saturday came along, and I'm exhausted. And this is where Larry should say his joke about being tired and exhausted, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, let me. Oh, yes. If uh, It's a Chinese proverb. Is it? Yes. Ah, fortune cookie. Yes. Man who runs behind bus gets exhausted. Man who runs in front of bus gets tired. Yes. So... <laughs> Don't run by a bus. Anyway, or in so, front of the bus. Oh uh, yes, but so there's motivation for you though. Very, very. Yeah. <laughs> so Elliot uh, got to share, and unfortunately for Elliot, and he's probably listening to this and for the first time, oh. his recording didn't work out. Even yeah. though Joshua is telling us he did recover the first 15 minutes, but something happened. J- Jeremiah went to save it, and it's, it's got corrupted. The, the file was corrupted. Not the message, um, but the file was corrupted, and something about it got recorded back in 1968. So I don't know what kind of torrent yeah, time warp just, happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we just used a USB thumb drive on the yeah. actual board to do the recording, and it just didn't work. No control. It something just went happened. In, so yeah, we got a backup plan. Maybe next year we'll actually do uh, two types of recording. We so we get a backup in yeah. case that happens. We hate that happen. Uh, we do. But so so Elliot, tell Elliot's story a little bit. He grew up like uh, I did a little bit, and uh, maybe some like like a lot of us. But he was actually a homeschooled, so not like me. But no. he was a Christian, and he struggled with uh, having faith. You know, understanding what it means to be saved. He tried all the different methods of trying to get saved, yeah. and it just it would bother him and bother him until he he. Just needed to believe. Just believe the gospel. And he told a lot of good stories. And, um, you know, the sinner's prayer won't save you. We actually talked about doing the podcast on this. Maybe we'll save it for next week. But we got to do that on King James eventually, you know. And yeah. But, you know, making dead works as part of our salvation. And the uh, so he actually talked about all that, which was pretty good. He did a pretty good job of doing that. Um, he went to Genesis 15, where Abraham, who had no son, and he just believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness, right? In uh, uh, Genesis 15, 6, we don't have that verse, sorry, but 
It um, says, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Oh, that was yeah. the verse. That, that okay, yeah. okay, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then Romans four one through three, which we don't have the verse here because I know that's not what it says. <laughs> that's not what it says. But if salvation were based on works, we could glory in that. Right. Right. But instead, he couldn't. He couldn't boast on that. He had to boast on the Lord. He had to give glory to God for His, and he gave he gave a number of other examples. Right. Well, I was thinking because I thought about this. When I read Genesis, I didn't think about it, but when he said he believed in the Lord, mm-hmm. believe is another synonym for believe would be trust. So he trusted in the Lord, and so what God told Abraham was, "You're going to be the father of a lot of, of many nations. Count sure. the stars, count the sand and the sea." Yep. And how many kids did Abraham have? I well, mean, many two, sons one, and one of them. Right? Right. That's right. <laughs> But at the time, you know, this is a, it's a weird thing because God changed his name from Abram to, to Abraham. Abraham, which is father of a multitude. And Abraham, since God said it, he believed it. So yes. he yeah. believed in that God would carry out what he promised he would do. Absolutely. And that was it. Abraham couldn't do anything. He tried. And how'd that work out? <laughs> it, didn't. it didn't work. God was very gracious because right. you, you hear the story in Romans and in Hebrews, and it has a very good, different testimony, but uh, because he did try to do it in his own effort at, at one point and yeah. still believing in God. I think right. he still believed in God, but he was like, maybe this is the method. And how many of us have tried to do that? We're like, right. I trust God, but uh, it must be like this. Exactly. And yeah. we get ourselves in trouble. Yeah. And so that's why he was. He, he talked about uh, the lamb that died in their place. Right. At least we believe it was a lamb. I think we all believe I that. I think so. We do. Right? Yeah. And Cain and Abel and, and the importance of blood. Right. He, he he was just going through all the stories. You know, David and Goliath and uh, and all that. Um, when David cut off Goliath's head, the Israelites didn't wonder if they had won. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that. that was you know. A good they, point. They, we, we know he won, right, at that yeah. point? It's over. It's yeah. over, yeah. He got knocked down, and you're like, did we win? And then he cut his head <laughs> off. Yeah, we won. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's over. It's yeah. done. Let's go get him, boys. And and then, then the, and on the other side, they probably were like, oh, man, we're yeah. in trouble. Didn't we just see that lost. coming. Yeah, we just <laughs> lost. So his whole thing was like just sometimes we make belief a work where we're trying too hard. Right. Yeah. That mm-hmm. we, 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 we see God, and we want to... We want to be saved, and right. we're trying so hard that we're doing all these different methods, and and when all God is just asking us to do is believe in what He has promised. Yeah, and that it's that simple. We, right. we want it's to that add simple so and much. That hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, because we always want to add to it. Right. right. What better way to show uh, that somebody is worthy is if they tell you something and you just take what they say it yep. at face yeah. value and you believe it. Absolutely. And for God to say something and like all these stories, when you read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the faith, you know, those people, they didn't see the fulfillment completely. Right. But they still believe God because God said it. Yeah. And that was enough for them. So their faith and their trust was in what God, who he was or and is. Right. And that the fact that he would do what he said. Yeah. Despite what they saw or how they felt about it or any of that, it was just based on God said it, so it has to happen. Yeah, that's so, I'm just sorry to go on a rant. No, no, here. That's, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> but that, that story of Abraham and sacrificing Isaac, what a! I always think that's a weird. thing. Why would God do that? Because that's a hard thing. I would have to say, God would have to show up in person and then tell me what He did. wants me to do. Because that's a tough thing. To yeah, sacrifice your son. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, oh, in that way, yes. Right. Yeah. You know, he'd seen he'd seen Abraham so many times before be faithful to what he said. Right. Mm-hmm. And he knew that he knew Abraham at that point that whatever God said, Abraham was going to believe it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think Abraham was probably thinking, okay, God's God's going to raise him up. That's what I think. He's got it. Right. He's yeah. like, okay, I got this figured out. I got it figured yeah. out. And, <laughs> well, and then when they're up on the mountain and. Isaac says, you know, we got the wood here, we got stuff right. for the sacrifice, where's the lamb? And Abraham, instead of saying, God will provide a lamb, right. 
God himself will God provide. will provide himself right. a lamb. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's, but God had already, I mean, he had two He had two contradictions of promises here. He always knew God right. would be yeah, faithful. God had already promised him that he was going to be the father of many nations through the son. Yes. Through the, the promised seed. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, and here he is going to kill it. And now you got to kill it. Yep. Yeah, so, so he's like, he's so, got to do something. He's got to yeah. do something. Yeah, and the fascinating thing about that story, and and Elliot didn't mention this, and maybe didn't even think about it, and maybe I'm wrong here, but think about Isaac's side. He's a grown man, yeah. right? And yeah. he has to lay down his life. That is a, a type and shadow of Christ, Absolutely. obviously. But Willingly. it's like, yeah, we we have these little kid pictures of him like being ten years old and like, yeah. what's going on? He knew what was going on. Yes, yeah, and he's like. Mm, I'm not so sure, but he trusted his father too. Right. And that was not only did he trust God, he trusted his father Abraham. He had many sons. <laughs> had many, many oh. sons. <laughs> so, but he trusted. And uh, so anyway, that was uh, that was good. And that was his whole message was just for the young people to try to, hey, believe on the believe on the promise. Right. Because he is worthy to be yeah. be worshipped. Be his the salvation is 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 worthy to be, your salvation. Is, is, uh, Christ is worthy of it, right? Yeah. And we don't have to help him out. No, no, no he's no. already done it all. Right. So, so then we did the little married couple thing. Uh, we're not going to talk about that right now. That was uh, we didn't record it uh, for probably for good reasons, but it, it was fun. <laughs> Any uh, interesting questions? Oh, there was a lot of questions, but I found it. Here's the one thing I will say about it: was the interesting thing was, and uh, no offense to the young marrieds, but there was a couple that was married five years, a couple that was married four years, a couple married. Two years, and then everybody else was within the past year. Okay. And the more important questions came from the people that had been married for more than four, you know, three, two, three, four, five. The older couples okay. uh, understood what marriage was a little bit more. So when we're, we're asking some questions, they're relating a little bit more like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the more pertinent questions were people had been married a lot much longer. Some of the other questions were more more philosophical in nature, which is fine, but you you could tell like who had been married a little yeah. bit longer, you know, it just a it lack of experience. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And, and they will get there one day and it's fine. It's all good. Um like but the kids it, asked who talked more between you and me. Because they knew we were both going to talk, so they said, "Oh, who did our more? kids." I thought you meant the. the and now kids. our kids, when we were done, they said, "So who did most oh, of the come talking?" On. And I was like, "Are you really? serious?" <laughs> yeah, come on. That's uh, there was. Uh, there is no way that I was going to be talking more. No way. No, no, no. <laughs> it was me, definitely me. Um, so then, the, the, then it came to me, and look, this is the Mike Charleston show. In case you didn't know, right? And it's not the Ben Sargent show. It's not Elliot, and it's not K. Okay, they can't really explain what they were talking. So let me just tell you what I'm going through here when I'm going to be sharing this, and I, I, I know where I'm going. I don't know how to end it. I'm, I'm frustrated. I don't know where I'm going. This I'm at the shindig, and I still don't even know how I'm going to finish it. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at my notes, and I'm not too thrilled with this. I'm not really feeling it. The first message, I was feeling it a little bit, kind of like Chuck. He got up there. He was feeling it, <laughs> and uh, I wasn't, and I'm like, ah, and I feel like I totally dropped a bomb here uh, in a bad way, not not a good bomb. Uh, it was a bad bomb, but so we talked about what is your life in James 4.14, Says, it says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. So I, I was talking to the young people, really specifically, because there's a lot of young people that show up to these things. And what are you going to do with your life? It is a vapor, just like that. It feels like, I mean, Chuck, you feel like you were just a kid just a few years back, right? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, you still Everybody feel like does. a kid somewhat, right? Yeah. In some way, not quite so much <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it just feels like, wow, it wasn't so long ago that we, we look back and we hear something we're like, that was 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness. And it just, it happens so quickly. And so I wanted them to think about those things. We talked about the two parables. What is the grace commandment? We talked about that in the first one. Uh, love, uh, Jesus answered the, the question, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And um, I love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And the interesting thing is those two things were one answer. He answered them with two things, mm -hmm. but you can't have one without the other. Yeah. You cannot claim to love God and not love your neighbor. 
And, and so it's imperable, imper, imperative, not imperable. I was looking at parables. Uh, imperative that you have those two. And then the, the whole point was, okay, the second parable was the image is on the coin. So in Mark 12, 14 through 17, why don't you go ahead and, and read that? Okay. It says, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And, they, and they marveled at him. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I find this passage fascinating. I know a lot of preachers will preach tithing out of this one, right. or giving, you know, because give give to Caesar's, give, it's a tax, you know. And, and, and the Pharisees were trying to challenge him on a... Uh, geopolitical kind of question, like, hey, we got him now. We, we, we gotcha. want to, yeah. You're supposed to be the Messiah. What do you think about the Romans? They're not supposed to be in here. They're, they're, ocu- they're occupiers. They're, right. you yeah. know, they're not supposed to be here. And the Messiah is going to drive them out, right? That's their, their, their understanding. And so he's like, you know what? Whose image is on this coin? Give that to him. And But, but uh, give that to God what is God's. Most people assume he's talking about money. But if you look at the rest of the scriptures on image and all that, th- think about this, that whose image is on your life? And uh, that was uh, kind of the question at that point. Like, we were made in the image of God. What are we doing with that? Give to God what is God's. Your life should be given to God. He is worthy of that. Yeah. He created us. Right. And so you're made in the image of God. You're supposed to give that back to him. Yep. Give what is God's. And and I guess that was where Romans came in with the passage is that all things that work together for the good of those that are called according to his purpose. The next verse is that he's predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. And I think that is like the whole point of this. Right. Yeah. That we are everything in our lives are to be pointing us to be conformed to the image of of his son. So my question to the young people was, what image is on you? And uh, so anyway, that was, I really didn't know how to end it at that point. And I'm like, ah, God is good. And uh, he's worthy. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. But it was honestly, the, the image of God is on our lives. And so that that is, it's 153. So it's in very important <laughs> uh, that we understand that if you do a study on the image, how important that God's image. Actually, there was one in Colossians that we just went over in Bible study that I was listening to again today, and I was like, oh, man, that was a good one. How did I not use that one in the the message? But uh, we are to be conformed to the image of His Son, and everything that comes against us is to, to be conformed to the image. And when we think of the image of His Son, we think of grace. Love, right. yeah. mercy, yeah. compassion, you know, all those things. Mm-hmm. And that's what we are to be conformed to. Uh, so anyway. So in that session, uh, if, you, if you actually want to take the time and, and go back and listen to the message once it gets put out there. Um, so Mike started that message by actually sharing his testimony. Oh, that's true. And I did. bringing, yeah. bringing yeah, you right. up to speed on you know what it was in his life when point. he realized that that was I didn't even for remember him. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You want to hear Mike's testimony, you got to go back and listen to that. Yeah, because that was the, the, the point. I don't, what was the point of that? Oh, my life, you know, it's a vapor and how my life was, well, yeah, like you said, if you want to hear that, go. <laughs> I don't have enough time to do my testimony here. But it was like our life is, is worth, he, he is worthy of our lives. And I guess that I had that question, and, and I don't know how biblical this is. This is a, a challenging question for me. I started thinking about this earlier this year, which kind of got us our theme. What if we didn't get heaven? Oh, no. Yeah. What if we don't, what if we thought. didn't? What if I didn't, what if we just got our sins forgiven? Would I be happy with that? Would, I, would that be enough for me to still praise and worship the Lord? Would I say, He is worthy of my life. I'm going to give Him everything that I am. And it's He is worthy of my life because He is. And are we selfishly motivated by like, oh, I get heaven? Okay, I'll believe. I don't get to go to hell? Okay, I'll believe. Uh, but do we believe just because He is? And, right. you know, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that was kind of the verse I used, like, hey, kids, you're young. Seek him while he may be found. And you, you not promised tomorrow. Right. And uh, so seek well, him. Well, to answer your question, though, when you look in the Old Testament, 
the Israelites, I know this doctrinally may not apply to us today, but however, God told them, if you follow my law right. and walk in obedience, I'll bless you. Right. And you look at Christians who follow God, their life is generally better. Should be, right? Right. right. I mean, they're ha- generally happier. Their marriage is generally better, although that's... Doesn't mean you're wealthy right. and healthy. Mean, yeah, <laughs> right. but, but you have something inside that's a little better. And you don't. some things you don't have to worry about. Right. Like, you don't have to worry about getting a DUI <laughs> or, you know... <laughs> As long as you don't Didn't think about right? that, but yeah, well, no, but I you don't, don't have, have to. There's certain that. things you don't have to worry. About. I think of my uh, childhood growing up. Some things we don't have to worry about. As no. My wife and I. No, because, God, God wants to bless us. Right, God yes. wants he to. Says that, you know, he wants to pour out His blessings on open right. the windows of heaven, so that we can't even receive everything He pours out. Right. You know, if we if we're willing to give things to our children because we love them, think how much more God wants to give right. to us. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah, he, that's he my to. point. Yeah, and if we don't get heaven. At least in this life, we're going to have a good... We're still blessed. We're still yeah. blessed. and Well, that's what a friend of mine once was saying. You know, you think about it. All the sin in the Bible, things that God doesn't want us to do, they're harmful right. for us exactly. most of the time. Yeah, they're going to cause like problems. They, they, God knows what He's doing. Well, so. and I think uh, you read stories. I was at the shindig. We were talking with somebody. I don't remember who it was. doesn't matter. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. It about me. the Fox's Book of Martyr. No, oh, okay. It wasn't me. <laughs> no. No. Uh, you read those stories and you're like, man, that was horrific. All right. Some of the, I couldn't read the whole book. It was right. just it's tough. Yeah. But those people willingly went through that and they were willing to lay down their life for Christ. Right. And not only their life, but their family. They're, they're willing to sacrifice it all. And they did it, a lot of them, with joy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the story of uh, William Tyndall, when they finally burned him at the stake. Just for translating the Bible and then right? he's singing hymns. Yeah. Who does that? That's mm-hmm. yeah. There was no anger or malice. So even if we didn't get heaven, following Christ it's is a better it. life. Indeed. So. Yeah. so then the last session was Sunday morning. Some of the people had already left, but it was this is one of Sarah's favorite stories. And uh, Ben was talking about the story of the 153 fish. Okay, that's not technically what he was talking about, but that's all Sarah <laughs> that, could think about because that's her favorite no, that's number. Why, that's why you said that earlier. That's right. 153. That's right. Yeah. 153 is her favorite number. So and jo- why is that? It, well, don't. We, it, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, basically, I know it's well, because of this. Well, that's how many fish they caught. Well, right. and what's the significance? Because some people may not know. Well, that's what we're not going to get into. It's going to be a while. Wow. It takes a while. It's it's it. There's a we'll lot. Save to it, it for another show. Well, there you go. You've been teased. <laughs> I, it, supposedly, that was the number of nations at the time. Uh, there's a lot of things with 152. Right. Yeah, so a there's a. There, that's not just it. I mean, wow. that could be one. There's there's a whole <laughs> mathematical thing. There's right. a whole bunch. She has like three it's, or four it's pages like out there. To Ezekiel. Uh, yes. Oh, really? It, oh, yeah. It's it's very interesting. Maybe we should do a podcast on that. Well. Well, that we might. <laughs> That'll be that. episode number one fifty three. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what be. <laughs> that's a good good call, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he talked about John twenty one four through six and ten through twelve, which was the story of them casting their nets on the other side. Right? right, they hadn't caught any fish, and he said, "Throw your nets over on the other side." Yes, mm-hmm. and they caught a bunch of fish, and they brought them to shore, and it was one hundred fifty three fish. Yeah, and he just said it. I'm like, how can you just say that? Like, that's a big number. I, I was trying to calm good. you down. I'm like, calm down, man. Calm down. It's, he, he doesn't understand. I get it. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I, but your passion uh, for 153. Yeah. As a fisherman, I understand what it's like to not catch anything. Oh, my goodness. It's all night. A little frustrating. Three's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> but his main point, I, I believe, at the end was come and dine. And right. that Jesus, with all the fish that they caught, that's not what they ate. He, right. already, he, he already had a meal prepared. Yeah, he had yeah. it prepared. Right. And um, and so come and dine, and Jesus, Jesus wants us to come and dine. And uh, that was kind of his message. So really the theme overall the weekend was God is worthy. Uh, he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our dependence. Right. Okay. Do you he's, not think so? Well, yeah, I just that's an interesting <laughs> phrase of putting it. Uh, he's worthy of our delight, our devotion. He's worthy to be exalted, and he's worthy to be loved. And I hope that by the end of it, uh, we had Colossians 1.10. You want to finish the false with that? It says, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Yeah, we're not worthy. No. But he tells us to walk worthy, that we walk in a worthy manner, but it's all to glorify God. 
and he is worthy of our life. And I hope that we conveyed that over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. I, I, I think you did. I, I think we did, yeah. but I, I really hope. I know a lot of people, there was a few people that were saying it was kind of a heavy spirit, that it was a heavy heaviness. And I was like kind of disappointed. Really? I when, didn't hmm. sense that at all. Well, um, maybe you weren't convicted. I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. You know, like yeah. I, I was hoping that we'd feel refreshed and encouraged. That was our prayer, and a few people were just like, uh, we feel a uh, little, little heavy. And uh, I don't know. But it wasn't a good way. It's I just, don't know how heaviness can be a right. good thing. Well, but because you feel like you want to get on your knees. You keep using the horde. I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> and you want to, you know, pray for people. And I mean, kind of like Chuck said, going into it, feeling burdened for yes, families I guess in that and way. relationships yes. or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, it's... It's real. I mean, you just can see. We know there's a lot of pain. I could I could see that by if you you have this heaviness because now you want to learn to love more. You want to reach out more. You want to give God. He is worthy of my life. Am, am I being really? Am I walking worthy of that? There, there's no way that all of us walk worthy at all times. No. You know, that is what we strive to do is to walk worthy of the calling that he has. And it doesn't mean just being a pastor, by the way, <laughs> the calling, <laughs> the calling of salvation, you know, are we walking worthy of what he has for us? And um, that's a, that's a, that's a mighty big thing. Yeah. Since you put it that way, yeah, <laughs> it could be a little heavy. Now all of a sudden everyone feels heavy again. <laughs> yeah, and, right. uh, no, okay. I thought it was great. I, I, it was in a sense, just it was refreshing, but it was also challenging at the same time. So, just to and to realize, life is a vapor. It it's is, over. It is. And I'm like, I look at my kids. I'm like, how did you get to be so old? Hmm. I'm not that old. Well, the question wasn't I, whether you were challenged. The question is whether you're changed. Ah, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a quote from uh, Ravenhill, right? <laughs> but yeah, uh, but no, that's that that was my intention, and that was our intention, in fact. That uh, Chuck had been involved in this process for months with us, with the music, and just praying at our house and having a desire. So I think, I, I think I can speak for Chuck that his heart was my heart on on this. Yeah, this I agree. weekend, and obviously his little message there. I was like, yeah, that's my heart too, and yeah. go for it, man. And it, it is frustrating. We see divisions in the in families and children amongst parents and children and wives and husbands. It shouldn't be this way. No, the, the, no. The, our marriage is a reflection. It's he is worthy of us making this work. He is yeah. worthy of our children and yeah. making th this work with our children, kids mm -hmm. out there listening. He is worthy of you submitting and honoring and loving your parents. It is it, you cannot say you love God and then totally disrespect your parents. No. It, it doesn't exist. No. And and so. Um, it's a hard message. It's a simple, simple, <laughs> Jesus but not said, easy. Right. As John said, this is a, a new commandment I give you, not a new commandment. This is from the beginning, That's you know, <laughs> love one another. And um, so anyway, hopefully we'll have some of those messages up by the time this comes up. Uh, you can look at it on uh, fellowshipofbelievers.org or mississippishindig.com. You know, one of those. And is it mississippishindig.com? Yeah, okay. I'm just throwing it out there. It may not be. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll have We'll put that in the description. How, how about that? Uh, but anyway, thanks for uh, taking the time to listen to this. And we'll be back next week with some more. Hi, I'm Joshua Charleston, the producer for The Mike Charleston Show. If you enjoyed listening to the show, please help us spread the word by liking, subscribing, sharing, leaving a review, or just tell a friend. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to be a part of the show, please email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. We look forward to hearing from you. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Mike Charleston Show. The Mike Charleston Show. The Mike Charleston Show.